Can I start by introducing myself? I'm Gary Flower. Come all the way from England to be here. A anyone come further? Okay, we've got some uh, Australians I've seen wandering around. I wondered uh, if anyone was in the room. Can I ask you to raise your hand if it's the first time at Expo? Okay, a lot of you. So it's the first time at Expo, first, first seminar. Well, big welcome to you and a big welcome to all our old friends that have come back. Now, kicking off, we've got Remain here, who, who's come not from England, where I am, but from the next country, Wales. And, and we'll learn more about his story soon. But he's come to talk to you about Tim P Team Pinball and the Mafia game. And it's very interesting. It's a new pinball company, and it's always exciting when there's a new pinball company. Um, but what's different in this case is pretty much the first time people are hearing about them, they've actually got a game close to being ready to go. It, whereas typically a company announces its birth and says we're working on this project or that project, we're going to do this game, we're doing stuff but we can't tell you the name. In this case we know the game is Mafia. There are some flyers that um, are going to be passed around so you can see the game. And best of all, there's actually a game in the vendor room so you can get the opportunity to see it in the flesh and play it. But I'm going to hand over to Romain now, who's going to tell you uh, about the company and about the game. So Romain, over to you. Bonjour tout le monde, je m'appelle Romain Fontaine. <laughs> yes, I'm French. Um, so, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for being here. Uh, also, a big, big thanks to uh, Robert and Bridget Berg for uh, organizing the show, obviously, and inviting us here. So, this is our first time in the US presenting our game, presenting our project, and it's, uh, it's a big honor to be here. So, the team, uh, Team Pinball, obviously. Janusz Kisz, uh, who was supposed to be here today, couldn't make it uh, because uh, he's having his day job, uh, as we all do. Uh, so, Janusz has been playing pinball since he was a kid, uh, going to arcade, playing all type of uh, Bally Williams machines uh, in the 90s. Um, he has three machines himself and he's full-time employee in a, in a company as a software engineer. Otilia, who is uh, Janos' partner, um, she's uh, handling all the business uh, aspect of uh, the company, of the project, uh, placing orders, talking with suppliers, arranging sales. Uh, she's basically the face of, of the company. Um, she also does um, IT trainings, uh, and she's as well a full-time teacher. Now, about myself, uh, my dad bought a uh, couple of games when I was a kid, and Adam's Family and a Terminator 2. Uh, and since then, I have 12 pinball machines. Um, I am electronic consultant. That's my full-time job, and uh, as freelancer. And all the three of us uh, decided to come together and work in pinball, design our own game. We started this project as a hobby project, so you know we didn't start like with this big plan of building this multi-million, like you know, billion company or anything like that. You know, it was just like a work of uh, a homebrew project. So we wanted to design one machine for uh, ourselves um, by using as many standard parts as possible uh, and also share our passion with people. And it was basically just working on a project for fun. So we started uh, working on this project uh, third quarter of 2016, so about a couple of years ago. Uh, we established the Team Pinball name in December 2016. So we started by uh, laying around sketches, refining with, uh, with a couple of friends uh, a, a, a first design of a, of a a machine, a play field. 
Then we went through computer simulations, which are much easier and much faster to iterate than making white woods, obviously. We made the first playfield prototype that was uh, uh, like about three, three, four months later uh, after we started, so beginning of 2017, and improved over the prototype. Uh, we had a second prototype, and then we made the decision to go for a first batch of 10 machines. So we built the first 10, we had a launch in 2018, and then we shipped the machines, and we're still shipping machines now. So how did it start? Home solutions. When you don't have any equipment or anything, you start in your living room and you just do with whatever you have at hand to work. Um, so we really started with a blank page, so we didn't have any CAD or anything. So we started working on a, on a CAD with uh, a friend who's a, a CAD engineer. Um, we worked on the CAD and thinking that, yeah, you know, we want to start CNC, meaning the play field. Uh, so Obviously, to go from CAD to CNC, you have to like split the layers for the tooling and do all this like very long process. And the funny thing is that because we're based in Wales, uh, which is in the UK, everything out there is metric, but everything in the pinball world is imperial. So we had to work with an imperial CAD, but cut the playfield with metric tools, and that was a lot of fun. Um, and what you can see here on the on the right is the first. Te test fit of the playfield in the in the cabinet. Um, so we that's that w the first playfield. So we started like putting everything on the on the playfield. Start checking if everything was uh, fitting together from the models we had. So we had to improve uh, on that. And then uh, to do that, we had like um, this uh, playfield holder. So actually this picture is older than the, the one I just showed you because back then we didn't have a full blown cabinet. We just had this play field, what we call the play field holder, the open frame, which is just sitting on the table and putting the play field at the right angle. So we could work on it. And because it is an open frame, it's really easy to reach under and, and adjust anything you may need uh, on, on the prototype. Um, so, and as soon as we had that, then we could design the cabinet later on. Uh, carrying on on the work, uh, so that was still for the first uh, the first machine. So we did a lot of things ourselves. I would I would say most of them. Uh, so these are some pictures of the uh, assembling the board uh, ourselves, the driver board that drives the machine. I um, uh, don't know if you can see that on the on the slides, but all the chips are mounted on sockets. So it's all through hole technology uh, and through hole components mounted on sockets. So you know it's easy to easy to, to, to work with. Um, there was a bit of pressure when everything was coming on, so that's the very first switch on of, uh, of what we considered to be like the, the, the pre-production, I can't really say pre-production, but like finished prototype of, uh, of the game. Um, so that's actually the moment when we had to decide whether we just wanted to uh, make more of the same game or just to keep this unique game for ourselves. And that was an, an easy decision to make because there was a lot of implications. But so we decided that, you know, at the end we wanted to share all our work and everything we were trying to, to, to do with this game. Uh, we wanted to share that with as many people as possible. And we thought, okay, you know, just take a step back and, you know, see what we can do. And we decided to make a first batch of 10 machines without announcing, announcing anything. So as uh, Gary said in the introduction, um, it's, it, it, was, it was quite a challenge to do. Uh, and we think we made the right decision. Um, so just a quick word about the platform before I introduce the game in itself. So the platform is uh, running off a, a single driver board, which is in the middle of the back box there. And the CPU used for the game is a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 runs uh, everything, game code, uh, display, animations, and sound. Um, all the, the animations, uh, so we don't use a dot matrix display, we use a 10.1 inch LCD screen, uh, HD, and for the power supply side, so you see the, the couple of power supplies we use. So we decided to go for 
uh, a, a platform that is uh, running around parts that are uh, ready available uh, everywhere. So that allowed us to focus on what was important in the game, which was the game itself, doing the sounds, doing the logic, the game, uh, the code, uh, and the en all the engineering for, uh, for the play field. So we, did, um, we really wanted to go for an easy to work with solution and something that was simple to, uh, to use for this game or maybe for future projects. Um, now, the Mafia. I was thinking if I would come like these guys as Al Capone, but yeah, I didn't have time to buy a suit. So, um, so the Mafia from concept to first batch. So some pictures of the game, close-ups. So we had uh, a, a shooting done with uh, a friend who's a photographer uh, of the game. Uh, just a couple of slides on uh, FCC, EMC, and safety testing of the game. So that was the first prototype we made. Uh, so, because we wanted to, you know, we already made the decision of making 10 machines, so you can't just make 10 and sell them, they have to be compliant. So, we went to a test laboratory to have all the uh, CE for Europe and FCC uh, certificate for uh, the USA, and uh, North America, so USA and Canada. Uh, the original estimations were about a couple of days of testing, it took much longer. Uh, and each day is more than a thousand dollars. So the game was tested for both uh, 200 volt and uh, 115 volt uh, used here. Um, so they were checking whether the game was uh, emitting, uh, not emitting too much RF noise or doesn't react to perturbation. Um, and the game was tes uh, tested for safety as well. Uh, Next slide, next slide is about team management. The one of, uh, one of the, the distributors we sold the game to said, uh, whoa, uh, guys, that's impressive. After a couple of years, we still haven't killed each other. That in itself is an achievement. So yeah, but we were training for it. Uh, that's the current office. Well, at least uh, it was in that state when we moved in. Uh, so, pretty bad state. Um, so, we made it pretty. Painting, flooring, fixing walls, fixing floor, fixing everything. Uh, and one thing I've got to say is that we got a lot of help from uh, friends and family who came over to help us prep the office. I know the office is a bit more like that. So we've got some oldies. Uh, some of the games are our own collection, uh, Janosch and myself. Uh, what you see on the right is our uh, wiring holder to make all our wiring looms. Uh, so we, we made a lot of parts for, for the machines. Um, so it is part of an office, part of a workshop, and part of a, a showroom uh, where we held the launch party. But before the launch party, uh, you have to work on uh, marketing and communication. So that was the photo shoot that we had uh, we had set up over a couple of days during a weekend uh, with a friend photographer uh, who's now moved back from uh, the UK back to Hungary. Um, and that was, that was very interesting to see him work on the game and set up the lighting and, and, and all of that. And I mean, I can see from, I think you can see from the pictures that you know, he, did, he did an amazing job here. Um, so getting all the parts ready for the first batch of 10 machines. So of course that involves electronics, PCBs. Uh, what you see on the right are the, what we call the playfield uh, overlays. So it is a one millimeter polycarbonate sheet that is uh, placed over the wooden playfield, the wooden board, which has the artwork reverse printed on it. And by doing the playfield that way, we can work on the playfield uh, quite easily because we don't have to, like you know, uh, manage uh, lacquering, clear coats, all of that. And the print quality is really, really good when printed on plastic. 
And that also gives us uh, freedom if we want to uh, offer uh, replacement protectors for the play field. They are very, very easy to change. It takes 10 minutes at maximum, 10, 15 minutes. And uh, we can also offer maybe alternative uh, artwork for the play field. So that, that's thing that we can, uh, we can consider. Uh, decaling the back boxes uh, and, the, and the cabinets. Uh, so that took a few days uh, to go through. So ju just to uh, give you an idea, we don't manufacture the cabinets like the wooden box ourselves. So we get that made by a cabinet manufacturer who just know what they're doing. Um, and we get the cabinets pre-assembled uh, together, of course, completely empty of any pinball part. So the first thing we have to do is obviously clean them and then apply all the cabinets and do all the fittings inside the, inside the cabinets. Uh, apply the decals and then do the fittings. Uh, so now you can see the coin doors are fitted, power supplies are fitted. Uh, we still don't have any electronics or transformers in the machine. Uh, our, again, our family helped a lot. So Janos and Ottilia parents came for a few days to give us a hand assembling the, assembling the machines. Uh, my mom came for a, a few days helping with the back glass, uh, putting the protective edging around. Uh, it was, was really a family, a family effort to get there. Um, the wiring, guess what? There is a lot of wiring in a pinball machine. <laughs> so uh, what you can see on the left are all the switches uh, wiring. So that's all the wiring for the, actually that's not all, there's more than that. No, no. That's the wiring for the 10 machines for the play fields. And then there is a big loom for uh, the whole cabinet. Uh, so in green, you have all the switches uh, uh, looms. In red and orange, that's the coils. And in yellow, that's the bulbs. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so for uh, simplicity, so maybe we have a bit more wiring that we could have achieved but we decided to go for direct switches, direct coils, direct everything. So everything is run off the single driver board in the back box and then directly drives everything under the play field. There's no additional PCB or network or anything. There is a single custom PCB in the game. So that makes troubleshooting really, really easy because one switch, one wire. There's no switch matrix, nothing uh, uh, funny in between. Uh, now we have the play field uh, assembled and wired, uh, just waiting to be fitted in the cabinets. I think at this moment we were still uh, uh, attaching the side rails on the cabinets and, and finishing a couple of things in the, in the back box. Uh, so that was uh, five play fields ready. So each play field was uh, sitting behind each cabinet and because the cabinets were already wired, we could just uh, plug the play field in the cabinet and check that every play field was working properly before actually fitting them in the cabinet. Uh, it takes about a day in time to completely make a play field, including uh, all the mechanisms, putting the peanuts in, uh, applying the, the overlay on the play field, putting the plastics, and doing the wiring. Actually, the wiring in itself is not that long once the wires are ready, once all the looms are ready. Uh, it took me about an hour for each play field just to do all the, the, the solder joints. Uh, quick view inside the cabinet. Uh, so we have the boomer and the sound amplifier and well, the rest is in the back box in terms of electronics. Uh, just good old school ball plunger, tilt mechanism. Uh, and because we try to keep things simple, I mean, you can see it's pretty clean in the, in the play field, in the, in the cabinet in terms of uh, wiring. Um, movie night. Uh, that was maybe a month before the launch party, which was held in uh, July. Uh, so we were editing the teasers video and trailer videos, which you can see on YouTube about the game. Um, that was video editing, and then we have sound editing. So that was a voice uh, voiceover recording uh, with Jason, and uh, who is a local and native English speaker. 
uh, the sound and music was made by a uh, an audio um, an audio engineer, uh, Moonwalk uh, Audio, an audio studio. Sorry, uh, who is in the West Coast in the U.S. Uh, and a lot of the sound effects were made by Balint, our game designer, uh, and. He also worked on the on the rules for the game. He made some sound effects, made some uh, jingles. So sound effects are more like like coins and and gunshots and all of that. And jingles are more musical uh, interaction. And here we are. Uh, we have the first ten machines uh, completed uh, in uh, in the office. And that was that was a relief to see these machines done. So. It took us, we moved in the office at the beginning of uh, February this year. It took us about a couple of weeks to refit the, the office and we launched the games at the end of July. So you're talking about six months uh, to do all the 10 machines. <coughs> Time to play pinball. So that was the launch party, which we held uh, at the end of July, on July the 20th. 2018 in our uh, office. Um, so we invited uh, Martin Ayub and we invited Jonathan uh, Justin. Uh, so Martin is from Pinball News and Jonathan from Pinball Magazine to come over uh, at the party. And I think we had fun. Uh, and uh, we got, because the office where we are is in a big building, which is a shared building, so there are a lot of startups and entrepreneurs and, and a lot of artists and people doing uh, so many different things. And one of them uh, is a uh, cake uh, lady, and so she made uh, some pinball cupcakes for us. Uh, local press and uh, TV was there, so uh, they went over the game and they, they, they shoot a couple of things and, and put them on, the, on, on their Facebook page. Uh, it is the Made in Cardiff TV, and we had a couple of articles in the local press as well about, uh, about the launch. Now we go on to the very first machine shipped. So about the, f the, the first 10 machines, uh, because we did absolutely everything ourselves, uh, these machines are a bit unique. They, they, they are kind of here to celebrate uh, the inception of the project and uh, the introduction of the Mafia game uh, into the pinball world. So we decided for these games to do something a bit special. So we put a, a number plate on each of the games, an engraved plate. And uh, we ship the games with, uh, you know, a lot of like little bit specials. Uh, so we have T-shirts, we have different goodies, we have uh, uh, plastics, custom plastics that are not in the game, uh, signed certificate, flyers, uh, all of that, uh, to say thank you to all the people who helped us uh, getting one of the first ten machines uh, without actually even playing it. So that was the first game leaving uh, the office uh, and felt a bit strange to see them leaving. But, well, it was, it was, we were really, really happy and a bit worried not knowing if the games would make it uh, uh, intact into its uh, destination. So this one was leaving to Sweden uh, and the game made it. So packaging, packaging obviously, that's a big, big thing. Uh, not the first thing that you, you start working on when you start a project, uh, but it's, it's almost as important as the machine you're building because if the packaging goes wrong, then you know, bad things can happen. So where are the machines now? Uh, so the founders edition, so one uh, is in Sweden, one in Austria, one in France, one in the UK, two in the USA, thanks to Joe at Pinball Star. One in Canada, thanks to Nitro Pinball, Tommy, Tommy. And one is in Australia, it's in its way to Australia. Takes a long time to get there. So what now? Um, 
So we want to keep things manageable, so we decided to make games to order. We won't start, at least at the moment, we won't start a production line, we won't stop promising thousands of games per month, that's not the idea. We want to keep this as, as, as a project that we can have fun with. Uh, I mean, for the last couple of years, don't get me wrong, it has been stressful and, and there has been challenges and, and a lot of times we decided whether you know, to continue or not, but we stick to the original plan. Uh, but you know, we don't want to get overstressed by that. It stays uh, something that we want to have fun with uh, for ourselves and for uh, the pinball community to share the same, the same hobby, the same passion. Um, because you know we're a small team, uh, so we are open to customization and open to new ideas. You know, you want your game to have a custom artwork or something like that. You know, that's definitely something we can discuss. And because we have a simple and easy to use platform, um, you know, it could also be used for homebrew games or uh, maybe you know something a bit different than than pinball, uh, really. And uh, that's it. So thank you very much for coming. Big thanks again to Joe from Pinball Star and uh, Tommy from Nitro for being here and bringing the game today. Uh, thanks to everyone who helped us. Uh, of course, I'm thinking about my business partner, Janos, who was supposed to be here, and Otilia, who stayed uh, in the UK as well. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for coming. <laughs>